The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents The Lonely Road, starring Gregory Peck, with a Family Theater Orchestra directed by Max Tear. Nelson Eddy is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. A thought occurred to me the other day. It seemed to me that we're all so busy making a living and trying to get ahead that we don't have enough time left to think. To think about things that really matter. Certainly, it's important to have food to eat and clothes to wear and a roof over our heads. Those are tangible things, things you can reach out and touch. But aren't the intangibles just as important, more important even? The things that you feel inside you, like happiness? You know, things like that are worth a little thought, too, because probably it's, it's harder to be happy than to get ahead. But happiness is something anyone can have, rich and poor alike. Happiness is something money can't touch. And here's something that'll go a long way in bringing you happiness. Prayer. That's right, prayer. Now, maybe you don't believe that. Well, just try it once, that's all we ask. Try saying a prayer with your family tonight. Because a family that prays together stays together. Ask God to help you. You can be sure he will. That this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Come in. Mr. Drucker? Yes? My name's Johnson. I think you've been expecting me. I have. They said you were working late. I thought I'd drop in and talk to you. I'm afraid I can't help you. May I have a chair? Of course. Thank you. I suppose you know what I'm here for. Yes, that's why I said I'm afraid I can't help you. Oh, I think you can. I think you will. What you've come here for is to buy off the bill. Is that right? Well, that's a general idea. Get out. <laughs> Very nobly and righteously put. I said get out of here. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Get a hold of yourself and quit acting like an idealistic schoolboy. I don't think you're big enough to put me out of here. I'm not going till I've had my say. All right, then. Talk. Hmm. Tomorrow you're going to introduce a bill before the house. Because of its public ownership's nature, chances are it'll have a successful passage. Go on. The, uh interests I represent stand to lose heavily if it passes. We're prepared to pay heavily in order to have it withdrawn. I'm not interested. You're not exactly a youngster in politics, Drucker. I hope you don't think you can buck us. Yes, I do. Because you think you got the people behind you? That's one good reason. Beside the personal one that I don't like you or the outfit you represent. Oh, Drucker, let's talk sense. I think you and I are both old enough hands of this game to admit that public legislation isn't determined too much by the people. It's made by uh, privileged interests that can afford to buy it. No, oh, sometimes I'll admit an issue does get out of hand and the people do take over, but it's not often. Now, in your case, the people you think are behind you, they're going to leave you cold. You know why? Because we can buy them out. Because we happen to control the press outlets in your district. We can turn them as thoroughly against you as they are for you now. You're threatening me. I'm and... saying what we both know is true, that money talks. Especially in politics, money talks. I think people suspect that, Drucker, but they don't realize just to what extent. <laughs> they honestly believe a man represents them in the assembly, like the school books say. <laughs> no, no. What he really represents are the various interests which have brought pressure on him. Oh, he may not take an outright bribe, but he is subject to pressure. He votes the way he's squeezed. Well, we're out to squeeze, Drucker. That's why I say I wouldn't advise you to buck us. I'll take my chances. I've had two terms in Congress now. My record's clean. 
And I've got supporters in the house and some You both, did right? have. Fisher and Clyde McKellery, they've come to see things our way. Don't count on them. But you say your record's clean. No, it won't be if you don't play ball. What are you getting at? I told you, the interests I represent are prepared to pay heavily to quash that bill. If you go along with us, it'll be worth your while. If you buck us, we've got the money to make you wish you hadn't. How much? Nine, Tucker. Fifty thousand. It's worth that to you. From your own research, you should know the volume of business we stand to lose if the bill passes. That's why I say, see it our way. You'll not only have the fee, but our active support in your Senate campaign. Johnson, I think you're bluffing, frankly. If it means that much to your outfit, it means double that for the people. My record's clean. You can't touch me, and there's nothing you can threaten me with. Oh, you're right about one thing. The record is clean. Yes. See these papers here? That's your biography up to now. Our own men dug it up, and it's very complete. There's not a single thing that we can hang on. When you admit it. Of course I do. But looking through these papers, I've learned a lot of other things. What do you mean? Oh, the story of a man who's been quite a consistent failure in his profession. What are you getting at? You seem to be financially in the hole, too. Badly. House mortgage, heavy doctor bills. From your bank statements, reports of investments in real estate. You've got about all you can do now to stay above water. Now, see here. I hate to see you fail again, Drucker, because this time you'd not only be washed out of politics, you'd be disbarred. Oh, yes, yes, we take care of that. We're prepared to buy sworn statements, documents, personal witnesses. Yeah, the whole works. We can do it. And we will. I think you realize that, don't you? Yes. You couldn't make a fight of it because we've got our finger in the public information outlet. If you can do all this, then why are you bothering to make me an offer at all? Well, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, Rucker. You know, breaking you would be a, a messy business in the course of it. Perhaps some unpleasant things might possibly come out against us. Well, we'd prefer to avoid the whole thing, but... But if you hold out, we have no choice. And we'll go through with it. Well, I... Even, even if I wanted to, to back out, how could I? Tomorrow's well, the day. Well, don't show up. But I... Could. Fifty thousand would set you on your feet. You and your family could climb out from under the debt. And your wife might stand a better chance of getting her health back. That's what you got to think of. You know, you may think that ideals can carry you through, but believe me, Drucker, if you don't sell out, you're through. Bill, where have you been? Oh, I'm sorry, Kitty. You were so late, dear. I called the office. No one was there. Well, I, I, I just went for a walk. I'm spending too much time in the office these days. What's wrong, Bill? Well, nothing, darling, nothing. Well, you look worried. Oh, I'm all right, Kitty. It's you. What was, what was the report today? Oh, about the same. You know, it'll take time. You know, he said it would take time. Well, did he, did he seem to think there was anything to worry about? No, dear, the x-rays didn't show up anything. He feels we've got a good chance to lick it, whatever it is, before it gets started. Oh, Kitty, Kitty. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, Bill. Everything's coming along fine. Sure, sure. Where's Marcia? In bed. She's in the school play tomorrow night. I wanted her to get plenty of rest. Oh, that's right, the school play. I'd forgotten all about it. You'll be able to go, won't you, Bill? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, she's counting so much on it. I told her you were going to be very busy tomorrow and you might not be able to come. And, well, then she started to cry, so I told her I'd see that you were there. Please, Bill, if you can. Look, look, Kitty. Yes, dear? I, uh... I... I may not introduce the bill tomorrow. I... I may give it up. But why? Oh, things have come up. And... You mean they're trying to pressure you? Yes. But you're not going to give in to them. Well, I don't know. I, I don't want to. Bill, but... you've never done that in your life. Never. Well, they've bought out Bishon and the others. I can't buck them alone. But, Bill, the, well, the whole district's behind you in this. Everyone. So the others did back out. You don't have to. You're not afraid. I am afraid, Kitty. I'm afraid the way I've never been in my whole life. They're big. They can ruin me. They've done it to others. I want to fight back, but they're too big. I haven't got a chance. But the people, Bill. You've got the people with you. You've always trusted them. Why are you afraid now? Well, the people... Are... The people can be swung 
Like a congressman can be swung. I know that now. I, I knew it before, I guess, but I never wanted to believe it. You've got enough power, Kitty. You can buy laws, men, everything. And what you don't buy, you can break. Oh, Bill, what... well, What's going to happen to you and Marcia if I buck this outfit? If something happens to me, do you think the people will take care of you? You think they'd even remember I tried to fight for them? No. I've got to do like everyone else. Look out for my own. And this way, if I, if I just play along with them now, I'll have their backing for the Senate, and, and maybe someday... Maybe someday I can get back at everything. No, no, Bill. Oh, we can pay off the debt and standing doctor bills. I'll be able to look ahead to Marsha's future for the first time since she's been a baby without being half sick with worry. And, Kit, we can have that change of climate the doctor ordered for you. I don't want it that way, Bill. Neither do I, but there's nothing else I can do. Don't decide now. Don't make up your mind, dear. Think it over. I have thought it over. It all comes out the same way. I've always been honest, fought for the public good. You know that, Kit. Maybe that's why I'm no further than I am. But this time, this time I've got to play it the other way. There's nothing else I can do. Have you prayed what to do? What? Why don't you... Forget it, Bill. Oh, what good would prayer do, honey? The facts would remain the same after what is before. No. No, I... Kitty, I'm nervous. I'm all muddled up. I, I think maybe I... Just better go out and walk some more. Moving around, it seems I can think better. And Shall I go with you, Bill? Oh, no, honey, you go to bed. I'll be up after a while. Oh, Bill. Good night, Kitty. You know, I'm glad you reacted the way you did. I'm glad you hated it the way I do. Daddy downstairs. Is he coming up? No, not now, dear. Daddy wants you to go to sleep so you'll be very good in the play tomorrow. Is he coming, Mama? Yes, dear. He'll be there. Marsha, have you said your prayers yet? Yes. Would you say another one? For Daddy. But I already did. With me, Marsha. Here, give me your hands. But what should I say, Mama? Whatever you want to say, dear. You see, Daddy needs a lot of help now. He needs it tonight. And it's something I can't give him. Or you, dear. Or anyone. So perhaps if, if you and I ask together that help will come to Daddy, maybe it will. And he'll know what to do then. Do you understand, Marsha? I think so. Then just hold my hands, and we'll both ask together. Just quietly in our hearts, without a word. Oh, I beg your pardon. I wasn't looking where I was going. That's all right, Mr. Drucker. I'm uh, sorry, I, I, I don't believe I... You're wondering who I am, is that it? Yes, I, I remember your face, but if the name... I... Uh, take a better look, son. Weren't you on the old 4th District Circuit a few years ago? Farther back. Wait a minute. Well, you're old Cy Caldwell, who used to visit our house back when Dad was on the bench in Springfield. Farther back than that. Here, take a good look, son. This stovepipe hat, for instance. Ever see it before? Maybe if I take it off, you'll remember. Why? Why, you're... Say it. What are you afraid of, son? You're Abe Lincoln. Look, son. Let's sit down on that park bench over there. Take a load off our feet. Come along, Mr. Drucker. Don't stand there doubting your mind and senses. If I seem real to you, then I am. For that moment, at least. And we're living in it. But I... I don't... Come along, Mr. Drucker. We've got some talking to do, and I've come a long way to do it. Oh, Mr. Lincoln, why are you here? Well, the way I see it, you're in trouble, son. A peculiar kind of trouble politicians are afflicted with ever so often. 
Being an old hand at the trade, well, I, I thought we'd better get together on it. Well, then you know about... Why, I remember back in Congress, my first term. You could measure a man by the way he stood in the war with Mexico. Uh, here we are, son. Let's sit down. How did you stand on it, sir? Well, it reminds me of an old trapper I once handled a case for in Menard County. Seeing a skunk in his hen coop, he forgot about expediency and went after it with a shovel. He paid the penalty, and so did I. I wasn't re-elected. Are you advising me to go ahead with the bill, Mr. Lincoln? Why, no, I'm not advising anything. I'm just saying that if you go through with it, you'll have to pay the penalty. You know, son, politics is a game where the greater your integrity and the higher your political ideals, the heavier the penalty you must pay to see them through. I know. Believe me, Mr. Drucker, I know. Well, then what should I do? Well, what do you want to do? Well, I want to see the bill through. I want to fight back somehow. Then why don't you? Well, because... Because I'm afraid. I could give other reasons, maybe. That's the main one. I'm afraid of what they'll do to me. I'm afraid for my wife and my family. They're big enough to ruin me, and they will. I, I think you know that, Mr. Lincoln. I know, sir. I want to do the right thing. I've always fought for the public good wherever I could. In small ways, maybe, because I'm a small politician. But I've always believed in my job and in the people. And now? Well, no matter what I believe, I... I daren't back it up. I'm afraid to. It's a fear I've never known before. And to me, it's... It's like the end of things. You see, I'm not a very successful man. I... I don't have anything to hold on to but the things that I believe in. But all this time, I've, I've managed to keep a kind of faith with them. I've never had to let them down. And now when I've got to face myself and admit that I, I can't even hold on to those things anymore... I... Mr. Drucker, since you're a very practical politician, I hesitate to say this to you. But on the other hand, since you seem to be cut out of the same timber as myself, I'll take a chance on it. On what? Giving you a piece of advice you might smile at. Well, what is it, Mr. Lincoln? Prayer. Well, that's... that's strange. My wife said the same thing earlier tonight. And I say it again. I say it as a practical politician. Do you think I could have carried the presidency through four years of war alone? Mr. Drucker, I say it to you now the same as I said it to Mr. Stanton and Mr. Chase. Alone by myself, I would have faltered in my first month in the White House. I would have failed before the year was out. Only because I believed myself a channel for the Almighty to work through. Only because I kept that channel open through prayer was the union of these states preserved. But how could prayer... Look at it this way, son. Every man is a channel between God and his fellow man. You can either block that channel and go on your own way, or you can keep it open and let him do the rest. Take your catch words, freedom, equality of man... All your political ideas, where do they come from? What are they but the reflections of God's divine authority caught in the mirror of man's mind? Try integrating your practical politics with a healthy habit of prayer. And you'll find that social action will stop running into an eternal dead end. Do you see what I mean, son? Yes, I, I think I do. Oh, I'm not saying do this or do that. I'm just saying pray, relax. God will guide you. You mean about tomorrow? Yes. But I've got too much to lose. I... Well, from a book we both know, there's a very profound saying. What shall it profit a man? If he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. I know. It's midnight, son. Time for me to go. Well, Mr. Lincoln, wait a minute. Tell me what to do. Help me. I can't tell you. No one can. Only you yourself. And maybe the Almighty if you let him. Well, if only, if only you could wait. Stay with me until... until the session tomorrow. It's time for me to go, son. Oh, wait, Mr. Lincoln. If you could be there tomorrow, if I could see you there, feel your presence the way I do now, perhaps, even though I am afraid, perhaps I... Mr. Lincoln! Come back! Come back! The next 
business before the house is the Waterways Authority Bill, number 1208, prepared by Congressman William Drucker of the 4th Congressional District. Mr. Drucker. Mr. Drucker of the 4th Congressional District. Ah, he's not here. Probably scared him out. <laughs> if Lucky isn't showing up, he'd be a fool to present it. <laughs> ah. Hey, Bill. Bill, I told you wouldn't have to worry. He won't show up. Like I've always said, there's not a politician anywhere, no matter how moral, hasn't got his price or his pet fear. <laughs> now, this Drucker was just a poor... Hey. Oh, well, wait a minute. What? Why, it's Drucker. He's coming in. Well, he must be crazy. You're going to have trouble on your hands, Johnson. Well, it's nothing to what he's going to have happen to him. So every politician has his price. Oh, shut up, you... Mr. Mr. Speaker, I... The chair recognizes the congressman from the 4th District. Mr. Speaker, I... I have before me here... I'll have to ask you to speak more clearly, Mr. Drucker. Oh, that guy's scared to death. I told you we had him. Yeah, he'll never get through his speech. <laughs> Look at his face. Look at his hands, the way he's shaking. Order! Order, please! Mr. Drucker, I'll have to ask you again to speak more clearly. I... I, I have before me Bill... Bill number 1208, regarding... regarding the... the proposed... waterways. Don't stop, son. You're here... Sure, I'm here. It's been a long while since I held down a seat in the house. I wouldn't have missed it. I... I can't go on, Mr. Lincoln. Sure you can, son. Order! Order! I'll have to remind you, Mr. Drucker, that you're holding up important business before the house. Either present your bill or relinquish the floor. Order! Order! Hey, what's the matter with him? Keeps looking at that empty chair beside him. Ah, he's saying something. Guy's out of his mind, I tell you. <laughs> Poor fellow. <laughs> kind of ironic, isn't it? What do you mean, ironic? There, on, on the wall behind Rucker, that, that portrait of Lincoln. I wonder what Honest Abe would have thought of such a performance. You know something, Bill? There was a man who would have fought us to the finish. And now, under his portrait, poor Drucker is cracking up. Go ahead, son. Stand up and tell them. But I can't, my... My voice, my... My legs, I... I'm shaking, I, I can't. I said you can, son. I said you can, son. There's a power working through you, and I know that nothing can stop. But, Mr. Turn Lincoln. around and face them and talk. Because I'll be talking through you, and you won't have to be afraid of anything. Go on, son. All right, Mr. Lincoln. If you say so. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I beg pardon of the House and the Chair for my... my unwarranted delay in presenting this bill. Before I do so, I want to say this. I realize, as each of you do, that the presentation of this bill means the end of my period of service within these chambers. A certain powerful interest in the state, which all of you know, offered me a substantial fee to withdraw this bill from the House agenda. It would have been easy to do. The fee would have been easy to accept. And the pressure that will be brought to bear on me now can have only one result. I present this bill to you now, fully aware of the consequences which will follow. I do so in the lonely hope that from my action, some of you and others not yet in these chambers may draw the confidence and will to stand against the pressure from outside interests which is constantly being brought to bear upon us and to legislate only for the people who have sent us all down here. And now, bill number 1208 for the establishment of a waterways authority in the districts adjoining... Well, son, it's time for me to go again. That was a great speech you made in the house today. It wasn't me, Mr. Lincoln. The words weren't mine, neither was the courage to say them. You prayed this morning? Yes, I prayed. My wife and I and the little girl together. Well, then go along with it. You won't be needing me any longer. How can I thank you, sir? Oh, you've already done it. 
Speech you made today, it was thanks. Every word of it was thanks. There aren't too many honest politicians, son. When I find one, I'm grateful. And I'm glad for America. I know I've done the right thing now. No matter how badly they hurt me. They won't hurt you, son. Believe an old hand at the game. Whether you know it or not, your speech was copied word for word today. Something rare for a run-of-the-mill house speech. And it's gone out across the country on all the wires. Oh, they'll hit you, son, hard, but... You'll have the people behind you, and the people will know. They'll back you up. You'll come through, William Drucker. You'll come through fine. Thank you, Mr. Lincoln. Abe. Well, thanks, Abe. Well, I'll be saying goodbye, son. Will I see you again? No, you, you won't be needing me again. There's plenty of other folks that do. There'll never be any rest, will there? I don't want rest, son. Rest is a tomb in Springfield at a memorial in Washington. There's a kind of death that is no death. A man's ideas live after him. They go on along with him, a restless, living, personal force. And so... And so, goodbye, son. I don't think you'll ever need me again, but if you do... I'll know where to find you. Goodbye. Good luck to you, son. Goodbye, Abe Lincoln. the word family a lot on this program. Let's stop a minute and think about what that word means. Oh, yes, a family means a lot of headaches and troubles, but a family means a lot more than that, something deeper. A family means love, understanding. It means happiness and security. Having a family means having what's really worthwhile in this life. And you know a wonderful way for a family to work together and stay together? It's to pray together. Because it is true that more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Try it. You'll never know how much a prayer can do until you've said one. The family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Gregory Peck for his performance as Drucker and Rod O'Connor for his portrayal of Lincoln. A special word of thanks also to Frederick Lipp for writing tonight's play and to Max Turr for his music. Mel Williamson and John Ryder produced and directed the program. Others who appeared in our play tonight were Philip Abbott, Byron Kane, Barney Phillips, Lou Merrill, Gene Layton, and Betty Arnold. Next week, our family theater star will be Guy Kibbe in A Star for Helen. Your host will be Robert Alder. Good night, and God bless you. of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries who have volunteered their services to fulfill it. This program is heard overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Services. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>